So um, I've had a couple questions as to why there's some noise in the background, but we're not going to meditate just yet. Um, some questions as to why meditate and what is all the yoga for? What is the purpose of yoga? I would answer that it's the same as living by any science, Christian science or Muslim science or religious. The sciences of religion are one and the same, but what is the purpose? It even narrows itself down to what is the purpose of life? What is life's purpose? <clears throat> and I would argue that life's only goal is a comfortable seat. And that this state of needing nothing, this place in this seat, where you are at ease and you see God's miracles floating, that's the purpose, to live in the bliss of the present moment. So all the efforts are for that moment. But then, why pursue that in a way that separates us from life? Uh, the argument is that you must go through it to get there. And you should enjoy the journey to get there. There are no shortcuts. There are no ways around it. Except living by scripture or being obedient to God. And so, I'll tell a brief story about Ramana Maharishi. The young man who did yoga, who prayed, who chanted to God, who lived the life of a Brahman, and he left the world. And he was ready to go off into the world, and then he stopped the world, and he left the worldly duties and world life that he had, and went off to a place called Mount Shiva, to a mountain called Mount Shiva, a very famous mountain now because of him. Uh, I think it's because of him, but it's a very famous uh, a mountain, Mount Shiva. People go and they walk around it, they go on pilgrimages to walk around it and pray, you know, 108 just prayers, walking around Mount Shiva. Anyway, so Ramana Maharishi goes to Mount Shiva and he sits and he falls into a deep, deep meditation. And his fingernails are like swords. It's a deep meditation. Ramana Maharishi sits there until one day he's discovered. And they put water on his lips. And they ask him to please come out. And he slowly takes a sip. And, so, and he, they ask him why or how did you become so enlightened? How are you becoming? You're glowing or you are, your body's withering, but you feel, you are enlightened. And Ramana Maharishi, who could not speak at this point, responds by telepathy to those who are close to God. He says, why are you asking me these questions? Enjoy your life. So if the goal of life is enlightenment, and yet the enlightened beings tell you to forget that, but be in the world, then there's a there's the, quest, the answer, like, here it is, we must go through life to get to that space where we are seeing God's work in, in perfection. To say that the world is in perfect order and to leave it be is a, is a practice more than a actual sustainable or a actual lifestyle. All of us wanna smile and breathe and as we put things in order, or we become part of the natural order or the perfect order, we want to enjoy it all. So this is why we have these eight limbs in yoga, and this is why you have your Ten Commandments and the Four Noble Truths and all of these teachings. So that when we go through life, we are obedient and we minimize the damage and we become great servants of God. Back to Ramana Maharishi, he eventually came out of the deep meditation state and he spoke and thousands of people would come and see him speak. Um, and he would teach the subject of moving towards God, but would, not, would caution people to, to stop pursuing God in a way as if you're gonna capture him. This is what people think, oh, I'm gonna be enlightened, let me skip the process. <laughs> Cannot skip the process. But if you do the process in an obedient way, then this is the goal of life. To attain this through the work. Not some miracle, not some plant medicine, not some, you're not gonna just wake up. You could, God could bless you with a present moment or a series of present moments, like Eckhart Tolle in his book, The Power of Now. He woke up, the brain had shut off, and he was uh, fully present. But in general, 
We must go through the work. So part of the work is meditation. So sit up, be present if you can. Let the noise come and go. Repeat the mantra to yourself. The mantra again is rum, like rum and coke. Rum. You sit, we expect nothing. And as the nervous system calms, so do we. So does our uh, nervous system, our heart, and our mind. And the noise settles. The mind settles, the noise settles, the nervous system calms because of our patience and the repeating of the mantra. Thoughts can come and go, that's okay. But we sit and repeat to ourselves the mantra, which we will lose time and time again. Gently come back to the mantra. Rum, 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 rum. Josh, walk away just a little bit. Rum. Josh, walk away just a little bit. What's that? Walk away a little bit. I'm going to teach meditation. Just a little bit. So to repeat the mantra to ourselves, expecting nothing. The only thing a meditator needs is patience. So 20 minutes, please. Set the alarm for 20 minutes. Sit up, be patient, repeat the mantra to yourself, expect nothing. Let the rum vibrate through your body. If it doesn't vibrate, it's okay. Think it fast or slow. Fasten your mind on the mantra to the exclusion of all thoughts. Thoughts can come. If they're troublesome or you can't get rid of them, don't chase them out. Watch them go out as clouds. Think the thoughts, but gently come back to the mantra. Fasten your mind to it. And be patient. Be at ease. Don't control your breath. Let your breath do as it pleases. Lengthen your spine. Tuck your chin if you can. Be comfortable.
this, you brat. <clears throat> like you're barely breathing. Maybe it feels like your body's absorbing the breath and the lungs are not working. Just still. Calm sets in. Perhaps the mantra disappears into an empty mind or into some thought that's pleasing. Come back to your mantra. you have a body and a mind, although you are not your body or your mind. You're the watcher of the body and the mind. The thoughts come and go. Watch them come and go. The Holy Spirit or the pure consciousness just watches his or her actions or obedience to God and what God is asking in scripture is etched inside you. Nothing new. The word good resonates. Do what's good. Do what's inspiring and uplifting. When you're ready, begin to flicker your eyes. Take your time. The purpose is to let the mind settle. The fluctuations of the mind are the cause of suffering. Less thoughts, less suffering. You don't have to get enlightened just yet. Just calm the nervous system. Let your body heal itself. Then you can flicker your eyes if you're ready. You don't have to. Remember, God is in all things. The lessons she teaches, he teaches. 
part of a process, moving us closer and closer to our awakened present selves. We are here only to achieve self-realization. When we know the self, we know God. So they say, be still and know. When we dig deep, all of it is in God's scriptures, is inside of us. All the eight limbs, all the ten commandments, all the four noble truths of the Buddhists, all of the teachings of the prophets are etched inside of us. Thank you for joining me. I hope that someone is uh, affected in a positive way by these words and this practice. Namaste, yogis.